The Beat with Ari Melber starts right now. Ari, you've got a good show. Thank you, Katie. And we begin tonight with breaking news. Former Trump campaign aide Sam Nunberg is here with me live right now. This is his first on-camera interview since Nunberg made some news late today, saying he received a new grand jury subpoena from Bob Mueller, and he plans to defy it. I'm going to interview Sam about that right now. Here's the context. Nunberg is the first witness to publicly say he will not cooperate with this Mueller probe. That's an announcement that shook the political and legal world late today, as just about everyone with any stake in the Mueller probe was assessing the meaning of a former Trump campaign aide vowing to defy the special counsel, which can theoretically land a person in jail. And while the White House generally tries to avoid specific comments on the Mueller probe, the president's spokesperson specifically rebutting Nunberg just this afternoon and disavowing collusion. He just said on MSNBC moments ago, I think he, meaning the president, may have done something during the election, but I don't know that for sure. Your reaction? Well, I definitely think he doesn't know that for sure because he's incorrect. As we've said many times before, uh, there was no collusion with the Trump campaign. Sam Nunberg was one of Donald Trump's first hires on this campaign. They did have a falling out in August 2015. His pledge to defy Mueller today comes along with an extraordinary revelation. Nunberg taking the public inside Mueller's probe and showing us this list of people. These are the people, according to Nunberg's materials, that the special counsel wants more information on. Sam Nunberg, thank you for coming on The Beat for your Ari, first time. thank you for interview. having me on. When we last spoke, when you were at this table... Yes, sir. You were cooperating with this probe. Why now, tonight, do you say you won't? Well, when I look at this, for the period of November 1, 2015 to the present, please provide all documents related to the following individuals. Carter Page, never spoke to him, okay? Never spoke to him. Corey Lewandowski, Hope Hicks. I didn't speak to them. They forced me out of the campaign. They pushed, Ro they pushed Roger out of the campaign. Keith Schiller? Keith is a friend of mine. Why do I have to give them my personal communications? Steve Bannon? Roger Stone? Roger's my mentor. I email Ari with Roger 15 times a day. Okay? And we had a big disagreement during 2016. Because once again, as you know, and I've been honest about this, I wanted Trump to lose. I didn't care if Trump lost. I thought it would be funny if Trump so lost. So you go down this list of names. Some of them you say you don't have much material with. Some of them you say you do. Why won't you hand that over when last week you were willing to talk to these investigators? Because I talked to them. I talked to them. I've spent money on an attorney. I've cooperated with them. Mm -hmm. And when I got something like this, and then they wanted me to go to the grand jury next Friday, and I believe they're trying to start a case against Roger, and the reason you, I believe that, Ari... You, let's just be clear so everyone can follow this. You're holding the subpoena from Bob Mueller's office. By the, by the way... Well, let's just, just so we have the facts. You're hold, that's what you're holding here, yes? Yes, this is the subpoena. It's you have a requirement. It. It's a requirement of, as you say, to get documents and material on those people and also for you to go in the grand jury room. Why do you think after you did the other interview, do they want to make you go in the grand jury room? Because they're trying to set up a perjury case against Roger Stone, and I'm not going to have it. Roger's my mentor. Roger is like family to me, and I'm not going to do it. Are you? I'm not going to do it. And Roger did not talk... Roger may have lied I mean, about it, let me be but very Roger clear. did Are you not. Are basing talk... that, that view that they're going yes, for on the Roger, questions they're I got. trying to use you to get to Roger based on a theory or based on the questions they asked you? Based on the questions they asked me, I have no idea in advance what they wanted for the grand jury. But what they, do, what they did tell me was I wasn't going to be a subject or target and I was going to get the same mm -hmm. kind of immunity. But they wanted something. Now, Ari, let me they just say something. They offered you immunity? Yes. Ari, let me say something. Sure. The idea that we had some major plot with Roger, with Donald Trump, um, after he, Corey Lewandowski, the minute he got hired, he was, he, he was, um, I don't want to be, he, l let me put it this way, he ran a scam to get hired, okay? That's my opinion. Corey Lewandowski, the minute he got hired, wanted Roger and me out. But you think Mueller's investigators? I think Corey was in, in there, Rogers. and I think Corey told them a lot of stuff about us. And, and let me Corey ask you: Corey tried when you to say set immunity, something up. Did they say that to you or your lawyer? Said my lawyer. I haven't communicated directly with them. And 
when you say they're after Roger, has Roger in any way encouraged you not to cooperate? No, he has not. In fact, Roger may be very upset. A lot of people may be very upset. I don't think this has been, has this been done before? Well, and especially Sam, with somebody when like... you say people are upset, I think, and I'm going to speak to you as an as a yes, interviewer, sir. but also as a human being, I think there's two reactions right now. I think some people are worried about you, and they're worried about what you're doing. I think other people are upset because we just showed the White House, which doesn't want to comment on this, responding to you. So clearly you Sarah are... In, should, Sarah should shut up. Frankly. Clearly, you're in the eye of a storm. Sarah should shut up. Let me ask you this. And she's this, a terrible. She's a terrible communicator. Let me ask you this. In by the way, her. By the way, her presidential. Uh, the one. The person she defends every day. He has a 35 percent approval rating. She should shut her mouth. Let me ask you the important question. Yeah. Do you understand? And I'm warning her, by the way, to shut her mouth. Do you understand that you have a legal obligation to comply? Yeah, I have a legal. Technically, I have a legal obligation. But Robert Mueller. And the team is going to have to decide if they really want me to give every communication I had with Steve Bannon and Roger Stone. Well, the sir, I think they've decided. And let me read to you because this is important. Defying a subpoena is a jailable offense. I'm reading to you here. Under the rules, the court may hold in contempt. They're going to send me to jail. Witness That's funny. Who They'll disobeys a subpoena. If you're saying that they've set a Friday deadline... In your mind? No, no, no. no I don't, they wanted a 3 p.m. deadline. For the already. documents, and then a Friday deadline for you to go in there, yes? Yes, and I'm not going. So if you're not going, are you prepared to be held in contempt and potentially go to jail? Uh, yes. And you know why? And why? Yes, why? Tell us because why. Because when they asked for something like this to me, and the way they treated, and Ari, you and I can disagree about it, but the, and once again, Donald Trump is responsible for this investigation because he was so stupid after he fired Comey. He had the Lester Holt interview and he had the Russians in his office. But if they're going to do something like this after the way they treated all the Hillary people with the emails mm -hmm. during that investigation, I'm not going to have it. So because you're saying, this shows, I just want to get the facts because there's a lot flying here for people. You're making two serious claims, though, about what Mueller's asked of you. Number one, you're saying that they subpoenaed this information about these other Trump officials by 3 p.m. today, and that deadline has passed, and you're now you're saying in defiance of it. Yeah, correct. I'm and not going to go over so 50,000 emails. So you're, you're saying this is not a pledge that you will violate, but now you are not complying with that deadline. Something like this is so ridiculous after I went down there, after, by the way, I spent money on a legal, mm -hmm. you know, for a lawyer, and a lot of other people have spent a lot of money, and it's not fair. It's really not fair. Now, once again, it's Donald Trump's responsibility that this investigation is going on. Mm -hmm. and, I, and as I've told you, I think it was 100% right that, Rose's, that he started this independent counsel, not because Trump fired Comey, which I agreed with, because Trump gave the Lester Holt interview and had the rush. Because of the, the, the things he said about why he did it. Let me ask you a, a question that's not about the law. Yes, sir. Uh, you and I have both been around these types of situations, these types of probes. They can be very stressful, even for people who are completely innocent, did nothing wrong. It can be stressful. Uh, how are you holding up, and do you want to take more time to think this through? Could you change your mind? I'm not going to answer something so wide as this. This is so ridiculous. I'm not going to give them every email I had with Steve Bannon and Roger Stone. I communicate with them every day. And are you, are you feeling okay? Are you feeling stressed out by this? No. And I, I'm feeling kind of, I want to see what Mr. Mueller does. It's never been done before. Once again, and here's where we go, where I, you're very fair about this. You can, like, I think that there's hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. I think that there's two separate rules for Democrats and Republicans. I want to see if they're going to do something to me about this after the way they treated Hillary Clinton during the Comey investigation. Let's see that. Let's see it. Let me ask Why? you Carter question. Page? I mean, I mean, Ari, look at this. Co Corey, do you think I talked to Corey on November 1? I despise Corey. If I could see, if, if I could find Corey in an alley, it wouldn't be very nice for well, him. Well, here, here's the question, since, you, yes, sir. since you're showing this, and this is your choice. If you don't talk to Corey much, and you don't have a lot of material of you and Corey going back and forth, then this wouldn't be very onerous at yeah, all for but, you to comply with. But the issue isn't that it's onerous. The issue is why is the government asking for my communications when they know they're casual and they know that I did not collude and we did not collude well, with I, Russians? The short, the short, That's let me, not let me, fair let me, me. let me try to be fair. The yes, short sir. answer for me is I don't know because I'm not inside the probe, but let me put it this way to you. Are you aware that they may already have all of that? I material? think they do. 
But they had, they you definitely, they, do? they definitely had, uh, I, they definitely had Roger Stone's emails. And so one of the they ways asked me questions about Roger Stone's email. They asked me questions about Roger and me that they would only have had Roger's emails. The questions they asked you in your previous interview suggested yes, they were already reading your private communications with Roger Stone. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. So that goes to a point that Preet Bharara, who, who I'm sure you've heard of, the federal yes. prosecutor. Very nice guy. Today, I like his podcast, by the way. Well, this is what he said in response to, to what you've done today. He said, I'm prepared to bet Special Counsel Mueller's team already has Nunberg's emails, even if you have them from other parties or from the service provider, you ask for them anyway. Among other things, you learn a lot when people selectively disclose. And so wait, this is an important question, Sam. Don't you think it's possible that what they're testing here is not against you, assuming you would completely comply, but sure. against other people if they withheld incriminating emails. Here's what I would say, Ari, is Roger Stone is like a surrogate father. He's like my father. You feel loyal to him. And I'm not going to go in there for them to set up a case against Roger. Roger did not do anything. Roger and I were treated like crap by Donald Trump, okay? The fact that I was fired for Facebook posts which were fine, racially intensive. Do you think that would have cost us a vote? Well, and you and I spoke about that, and you actually apologized for that. I apologize for it. So I know that history. And then, let me and ask then you Corey. This. Let me ask you and this, then sir. And then Trump was ready to let yes. Corey and those fire old, Roger. And those are old campaign scores, and an investigation of a campaign is Hope obviously. Hope Hicks? Hope Hicks, who? Hope Hicks. You mean Corey's uh, girlfriend, his paramour? Well, let, let's stay, but let's stay on track. Do you think I contacted her? Let's stay on track on what the yes, probe sir. is looking at, because I think you have gotten the attention of a lot of people tonight, as I mentioned. Yes, the sir. The probe is looking at whether people are complying. You seem, if I'm reading you right, the best case you're reading of what you're saying is an inference that they are out to get you or Roger. But you don't really know that, because if, if you guys comply and didn't do anything wrong, you don't think Bob Mueller, from what you said last week, is going to make up a case against him, I don't do think you? he's making up a case, but I think that this is too much. I think that the, this request is too wide. Let it's me not play, fair. Let, let it's me not fair. You, let me play for you what you said about these investigators it, 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 on this okay, show. Okay, fine. And, and, I, and I said they're very professional, but this so is... So let's, let's take a look at that. But Ari, we'll November wait, wait, one, Let's take a look okay, at that. This was like a white shoe law firm mm. going in. Okay, I'm sat in there. They asked me questions. They had charts out. They had specific things they wanted to know. They had follow-ups. It was almost like flow charts. It wasn't a waste of taxpayers' money to have me in there. It wasn't a waste of time for me either. And I'm happy to have been in there and I'm happy to have cooperated. Is that still your view? Because that's if that's my view. your view, then it wouldn't be too broad. It would be that they're like a white no, law firm being it, diligent. I'm, I'm asking you. No, and my point is, is that I was so honest, I cooperated. Mm -hmm. I didn't say, call me to the grand jury when they first, when they first contacted mm -hmm. me. And after that, after sitting there for so many hours, mm -hmm. after paying the money for a lawyer, mm -hmm. I think it's something like this. And, I, and, and Ari, I have to earn a living. Mm -hmm. You know, I know, I, I, you know, I know Bob Mueller, I know, I know that whole team, and, they, and they're right, and they probably have something on Trump. Trump did something pretty bad, if I had assumed. What do they have? I don't know. I have no idea, but they have something. Do you but think it, they were more interested in Trump related to the criminal hacking which occurred, and we know there were stolen emails, or in relation to all the social media and the I think sanctions? they were interested in something with his business. With his business? Yes. Did they ask business. you about the way he run his business? Yes, they asked me about his business, and I have no. By the way, I have no idea what he did, and he may not have done anything, but, and I could they, be wrong. You felt they were asking you more about potential crimes related to the Trump organization than related to the Trump campaign. That's what I felt. Yeah, well, that was your interpretation. That was. Uh, Let me ask you this: Do you think that these investigators are escalating against you for a reason? Because you did say something that's true, and you know there are people out there that are that are wondering what you're doing. There are people, as I mentioned, that are worried. Are you doing something that's adverse to your interests? Wait. And there are people saying, well, okay, does he have a point? What you just said is true, that an interview is more cooperative. And you did that cooperation, and now they're bringing you before the grand jury. Do you have any reason to know why they're appearing to escalate against you in that way? Our strategy was not to ask why they wanted me in at the grand jury. Once again, as I was told, I am not a target. Mm -hmm. I am not a subject mm -hmm. of the investigation. Which, right? is, which would, if true, would but be they good news wanted, for you. But they wanted something I said to them in that interview, they wanted at the grand jury. Do you think they wanted it to put on record for testimonial purposes to use against someone later? Yes, of course. 
Yeah. Well, you say, of course, we're all, everyone's trying to understand. Oh, okay, yeah, yes, yeah. You might be ahead of where some people are. So you think they want you in the grand jury room. And you're a lawyer, too. You understand the way it works, right? And the, in these they, grand juries, they build a they case. Want, they want you in the grand jury room to build that case against someone else. Yes. And here's and the And that reason, person is? I don't know. You don't know. And if it's Roger, I'm not going to testify against Roger. Roger did not do anything. Roger was treated terribly by Donald Trump. And he's one of Donald Trump's oldest advisors. Yeah, but Trump is, uh, Trump is the most disloyal person you're ever going to meet. I've you told know, you this. If you do comply with this and you go in the grand jury room, you know you have to go in there alone without a lawyer. That's a, the, the issue isn't about me going in there. I have no problem telling them what I, what, what I said in there. The issue is, is I don't think this is fair. This is over. This is the idea that I can't. Carter Page, Corey Lewandowski, Hope Hicks. I mean, Corey Lewandowski and Hope Hicks colluded to get Roger and me fired. Okay. Ho Carter Page? Never met the guy in my life. Never do you, met do you him. Think, do you think Carter Page has criminal exposure? I think Carter Page colluded with the Russians. And I've told you that before. I've told you that and, privately. I think he colluded with the Russians. And how many people. Do you think he told he was doing that with on the campaign? I don't know. I don't know. I don't think he told a lot of people because I don't think he had a lot of power in do the campaign. Think, do I don't you, think he had a lot there's of... There's been a lot of talk about how Mueller has not yet done anything in an indictment level regarding collusion. Do you think what you just said, your allegation that Carter Page colluded with the Russians, do you think Mueller has that from multiple witnesses? I have no idea. I have does, no does idea. I wouldn't be good to does, does he have that from you? No. No, okay. I never spoke to him. Sam Nunberg, thank you for being here. I have another update. You're welcome to stay at the table, and you're okay. welcome to continue to participate. I want to give viewers a little more context on what is a big development. Until today, think about it like this. Every single person who has spoken publicly about this Mueller probe, who's been involved, has at least publicly said they'll cooperate. Are you going to talk to Mueller? I'm looking forward to it, actually. It's very eager. Okay. Um, to explain to the special counsel, you know, whatever whatever responses are required. And we will continue to cooperate with Bob Mueller in his investigation. We'll continue to cooperate and comply. I'm more than happy to be transparent about it, and I'm more than happy to cooperate with everyone. Uh, and yet today, as we just saw, a different tack. I want to turn to attorney Maya Wiley, who's a former counsel of the mayor of New York City and a talented uh, and knowledgeable legal analyst for us. And you were also at this table with Mr. Nunberg, who is still with us, uh, the last time he was here. And he spoke about what was, again, for viewers following this, the FBI interview. That's not the grand jury box. That's an FBI interview. Now, what you just heard from him, uh, your analysis. Well, I'm really quite flabbergasted at the statement that Sam, you don't believe that there is anything that you would share that would implicate Roger Stone in a crime, and yet you would not actually come forward in a grand jury and then give repeat the statements you've made already directly to federal prosecutors in front of a grand jury. It's rather astounding. I certainly, the way I've seen the subpoena, it is a reasonable subpoena. It does not sound like a huge random fishing expedition. Mr. Number used the word broad. Is your view that it is very broad or that it, it seems targeted? It seems pretty targeted to people who are directly implicated in the investigation already by m many things. If there are emails that do not exist, they can't be turned over and it can't be burdensome to produce them. Let me ask you this. And Mr. Number, who's, who's taken time to be on the show before, which I appreciate, uh, he said many things, some of them shocking, some of them may have been based on conjecture. He did say one thing that I mentioned earlier that struck me as very reasonable and something I've heard from a range of people caught up in this situation, which is, if I cooperated and I didn't do anything wrong and I've been told I'm not the target and I'm spending all this money, why is it getting more pressure on me? Why the heat? What did you think of his concern there that might be animating how, how he's feeling? I think it's a very human response to being in the, a witness in an investigation. It's stressful. It is time consuming. There's no question that in the process of trying to get to the truth, which remember it is the grand jury that will decide whether or not to indict, uh, mm. so that the grand jury can hear the evidence that the prosecutors have heard in order to understand the facts and circumstances that are being brought to them. So to sort of suggest that talking to the prosecutors is sufficient in the context of an impaneled grand jury is sort of saying, let's have justice with both eyes, mm. not just closed, but gagged and completely unable to engage in a criminal See, investigation. And, and, this is where, and this is where I'll disagree with you respectfully, is that I felt they were very biased against Roger when I was in there. 
I felt that they're going after Roger. I felt Paul Manafort and Rick Gates did illegal things. And they couldn't pay the taxes. I don't know why they didn't want to pay the taxes. And they worked for Russian oligarchs. Roger didn't work for Russian oligarchs. They went after, they asked me things. In other words, once again, as I just mentioned earlier, ma'am, is that they asked me things like, was this some grand plot by Roger and me to get fired? And then I would work for Ted Cruz, and then we would collude with the Russians. I mean, it's ridiculous. So Sam said here last week on Wednesday that this was an extremely professional and highly mm -hmm. skilled team. So the notion that they were asking questions, first of all, does not mean they were suggesting that, the question, that there was answers that would be true or false, right? Only that there were things that they were going to pursue. The fact that they asked them in and of themselves has nothing to do with what they will ultimately decide to take to the grand jury. I believe they're but, biased but, against Roger. But yeah. if we had a justice system that said that witnesses could decide Decide the guilt or innocence of any particular individual and therefore not cooperate and make that legally permissible, essentially we would not have any system at all. Can you speak to that structural point that, uh, that Ms. Wiley raises? Because what she's saying is... I think wait, wait, Robert, wait, wait, wait. Okay. What she's saying, I just want to be clear, you, get, yes. you know you get time. I know. What, yes, she's, I do. what <laughs> she's saying is that you may have, to put it in the best light possible, you may have a good faith, honest belief in your position and the innocence of your very dear friend and I think anyone who's fair who's watching can relate to that it sounds like you care a lot about someone and you think they're in the right he's my mentor and, and he's you like don't a want father to, to me mm -hmm. and I think if anyone's if anyone's fair and honest and thinks about the person that in their life that's in that role they could understand the feeling you have and yet Maya Wiley is saying something that's broader than that, which is you have, as I mentioned earlier in the interview, yes, you have an obligation or federal law to comply because it's not your call or my call or Maya's call. It is the call of justice, which we have prosecutors to here's charge what, what and I'm courts going. to adjudicate. What do you say to her point that it's not your call? I say, one, you're right, and I'm making it my call, but here's what I also say. Why did they not indict Podesta, Podesta's brother? I Tony mean, Podesta probably has, according to the reports, significant uh, foreign lobbying exposure here. Correct, he, he, and he, he worked could, with Manafort. I can't prejudge it. I can't prejudge it, but, but he why, is a person who... I, because it's not over. You because know it's here's, not what over. I, here's what I would say, and, and here's where we can agree to disagree. I always find that with these investigations, whether it was Scooter Libby, whether, it was any, whether they didn't charge Hillary Clinton, that there's always a reason... So, that the Democrats don't get tried and the Republicans do. Now, you're going to laugh at me. <laughs> I'm going to definitely laugh. You are going to yes, laugh at me. But you explain to me why she didn't get indicted. She hid her emails. Well, but, but I, I, I'm going to use moderator's privilege and say... <laughs> yes, sir. You're trying to change the topic. No, I'm not changing yeah, the, topic. the topic. What I'm the saying is... The questions here are, and the reason you're here... That, that the, reason, the statutes the are so is, broad. The reason you're here is... You seem to be taking a position that is befuddling and, and really affecting a lot of people. And people are wondering, is it the right decision for you? And is it the right decision under law? And here's why I'm... And by the way, once again, Roger's my mentor. Roger's like a father to me. I don't care. They can take down Donald Trump. Take him down. If, he did, if Donald Trump did something, take him down. So you're, you're saying you would protect Roger but not Trump? I'm not going to go into a grand jury for them to set up a case against Roger, whatever case it is, which could be ridiculous. If it's ridiculous, there's no reason for you not to go and help the, him a, a by sharing journey. what you know. The, the suggestion and the, the, what you're essentially projecting to me as an attorney yes. is that you're actually protecting him because there's something to protect. There's nothing and to protect. So you're, you would do more service to your mentor by demonstrating that he has nothing to fear if, as you say, there's nothing in the emails. Uh, you, as far as you know, have never seen or heard any contact between him, WikiLeaks, Russians, that kind Here's the, the problem. Campaign. These statutes, they take these statutes, as you know, as a U.S. attorney, and they're so broad, they can find a way to just charge So you're them. worried, just to be clear, you're worried they could make a case against Roger Stone? I, I'm worried that they're trying to make a case against Roger, that they're, that they're, court, that they're maneuvering. And what would that case be built I have no idea. I have no idea, but it's ridiculous. Would it relate to WikiLeaks? I can tell you, once again. Would it relate to WikiLeaks? It could relate to WikiLeaks. And here's the other thing, what I would tell you once again, and I want to be, so, and I've been very honest here. Rod, I was fired 
Roger quit. We were treated like crap by Donald Trump. We had, Roger could have done whatever he wanted. And I had a fight with Roger about this. I was happy to see Trump lose during you, the summer. Do you think the president uh, saw your last interview on, on this show? He did, and you know what, I don't care. You know that he did? No, I said, uh, yeah. Yeah, what do you want to say to him tonight? Um, I don't care. You don't but care? He, I don't care what he thinks. You know, I, I don't care. Once again, I worked for him from 2011 to 2000 and mid-15. He had separate sets of rules for Roger and me. When he hired Corey Lewandowski, who he thought left the Cokes to go work for Trump, which he did, and Corey was fired, and that's a fact, and Corey can come on your show and dispute it, he decided that we were trash. And then, as I've told you, he treated Michael Cohn very badly. Are you worried about Michael? Yeah, like I, 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 I'm worried about Michael because I, I don't, Let by the way, Michael this. did not do any, I I'm don't know if I'm going to I'm going to bring in a former federal prosecutor who also has expertise on this, but let me ask you this question. Does your lawyer think what you're doing now tonight is a good idea? I have no idea. I think he may have dropped me, frankly. I don't know. I definitely know my father doesn't like it, and my father's my, one of my co-counsels. I think your family wants you home for Thanksgiving, and I hope you will testify. I th here, here's and the thing, know, though. Isn't this before? ridiculous? No, it's not ridiculous, Sam. It, is it it's November? It's so not ridiculous. November 1, 2015. I talked to because Steve Bannon and is... Roger 15 times a day from November 1 to 2015. Well, talking to them uh, in emails They're... are two different things. So they could subpoena your phone records as well. And They're more they than should. welcome to. But my point is, if you had email exchanges with them during Can the period that is under investigation uh, with people who have clearly been implicated in some way. That doesn't mean they've committed a crime, but c clearly have been implicated in transactions that relate to understanding whether or not there was a violation of federal law here. Then it is a completely reasonable request to ask for those emails. From November 1, 2015. It was the period of the campaign in which there were, it was, all you have to do is go back in the to timeline. The by the way, to the present. To the president. Yeah. Yes. Let that's me do this as, as promised. Hang with me. I want to bring in a former federal prosecutor, okay. Barbara McQuaid. I guess I will begin with a point that Sam raised. Uh, have you ever seen anything quite like this? No, I haven't. Um, typically, people comply with grand jury subpoenas. You know, there are a few bases uh, that a, a witness can use to object to a grand jury subpoena. One is if they have some sort of privilege, like a Fifth Amendment privilege against self-incrimination, attorney-client, spousal privilege, or the like, or if they believe that the request is unduly burdensome. And the remedy there is to file a motion to quash with the court and ask the court to narrow the scope. If that is granted, then a prosecutor might say, uh, we'll ask you for fewer documents if this is unduly burdensome. But other than those circumstances, uh, if, if right. a witness refuses, then I do think they face contempt of court and possible jail. And contempt of court, is, as Mr. Numberg and I were discussing earlier, can bring uh, jail. I'm not going to jail. Come on. Ari. Let me, do you let think me, I'm going to jail? Well, let me, let me put it to the federal prosecutor, and, and you're still here, so you're part of the discussion. But, uh, Barbara, if we take uh, Mr. Nunberg's argument in the best possible light as a legal argument, it would be something that you just referred to, which is maybe this is an overbroad request and it should be narrowed. Now, typically, as I think we we all know, and as viewers will know, because this does feel so unusual, typically that would be a private set of negotiations through lawyers and not played out in public. And from what we know about the Mueller probe, that is not the preference of, of the investigators. So your view of that aspect of this, Barbara, and what they may or may not or legally could do with a witness who is divulging so much. Yeah, I mean, the first step would be for a lawyer to communicate with the prosecutor and ask if the scope of the subpoena could be narrowed. If that is refused, then to file a motion to quash. But short of that, I think that a judge could very well hold a witness in contempt. And I would think in a case like this, where a witness is so publicly defying the subpoena power of the special prosecutor, um, I, I would I I believe that a prosecutor would feel a very strong uh, desire to file um, charges to file a motion for contempt because you have to think about the deterrent effect that that might have on other witnesses who are out there not just in this case but in every case going on across the country so barbara another follow-up on that to you and then uh mr number your your yes, response sir. if you want but barbara what you're saying is under the law we're not here to predict but you're saying under the law based on what's happening uh 
at Mr. Nunberg's own account that there was one grand jury subpoena documentary deadline that he's passed now today, and the other one is testimonial, that is him going in, that he vows to defy. You're saying they would be in their legal rights to file a contempt proceeding at, at what point? Well, I do. You know, again, I think lawyers typically try to work things out. If uh, if a witness says, I don't have enough time to go through the emails you've requested, you can ask for an extension of time for those things. So there can be an attempt to work things out. I would imagine there would be a request, um, is he really defying our subpoena? Because I've heard a lot of reasons. I've heard unreasonable. I've also heard I don't want to incriminate my mentor, Roger Stone, which would not be an appropriate exercise of the Fifth Amendment right, which is about self-incrimination, not against incriminating others. So I think they would want to clearly define what is the basis for your objection? Do you just need a little more time? or are you truly defying this subpoena? And if it's the latter, I do think a motion for contempt of court would be appropriate. And you asked about other, if you've ever seen anything like this. The one example that comes to mind is Susan McDougall, who refused to testify for the special counsel in the investigation of Bill Clinton. She was held in contempt and was jailed for 18 months for that contempt. So Sam, your reaction to hearing that laid out here by a federal prosecutor and your reaction to, I think, the implication of what Ms. McQuaid just said, which was, and I'm going to put this, uh, again, yes, I sir. try to be fair, but I try to be accurate. Yes, sounds, you are being fair. What I'm about to say sounds bad, but I'm going to say it to you. The implication of what she is analyzing there under the law is that the way you are speaking out, and you've spoken out several times today, this is not the first time you've spoken out today, uh, the way you're speaking out, she said, is actually potentially hurting, undermining the type of case you might make for why you shouldn't have to testify because you're putting forth the idea that you might not want to testify to protect someone else's conduct. Well, I'm not protecting Roger's conduct. What I would say is they went after Paul Manafort, they went after Gates. Now, Paul Manafort and Gates, I've never spoken to, I met Paul once at a Yankee ALCS. They went after them from the very beginning for activities earlier than the campaign. If they're trying to build a case against Roger, I'm not going to be part of it. I'm not. Roger didn't do anything. Roger didn't do anything except get treated like crap by Donald Trump, the president. You keep saying you don't think there'll be a consequence. What if the Whoa, consequence he... for that is going to jail, Sam? They're not going to send me to jail. You know what, Mr. Mueller, if he wants to send me to jail, he can send me to jail, and then I'll, and then I'll laugh about it, and, and I'll make a bigger spectacle than I am on your TV show right now. Well, sir, I don't know what they're going to do. Uh, I don't. I don't know that, um, and I can't prejudge it. I know you can't. Yeah. But but but, Miss McQuaid, Barbara, if you would speak to Sam's point, um, he's saying that's not going to happen. You just outlined again a different case, not a prediction, but a different case uh, where the refusal to testify did result in a lengthy time in in jail. Yeah, I don't want to give Mr. Nunberg legal advice. He sh certainly should consult with his lo own lawyer about what he should do in this yep. case. But if his information and his evidence is that Roger Stone did nothing wrong, he should tell that to the grand jury. The grand jury wants to find out the truth. If he's got information truthfully that can exonerate any of these people, that's information that's valuable to the grand jury as well. Ma'am, um, how and many then, times should I go to the grand jury? Uh, what if they want me again? What if that, how many times if, do if I they, have to go to the, the grand jury? If the grand, if the grand jury wanted you again, it would be because there was some additional information forthcoming during the investigation that they had not had the opportunity to ask you about. So I think this is what's incredibly important here. Sam, you got immunity. So you certainly don't have any reason not to testify, right? As you told us yeah. today. Not only that, not only that, it actually makes it appear that Roger Stone has something to hide because you will not go testify. He has nothing to hide. Well, then go testify. You know what? I'll, t I'll tell you what. Okay, so let I don't mind about testifying. I'm not going to sit there for 80 hours for this document request. I have real work to do. I have to earn a living. Mm -hmm. I don't think this is fair. I don't think it's fair to ask me, Paul Manafort, Rick Gay once again, like I told you, Corey Lewandowski, Hope Hicks. Do you think I was talking to Corey and Hope Hicks? I mean, while they were having their affair after they screwed over Roger and me? Give me a break. Well, Carter Page? Never met so him. So let me ask you the... Donald... By the way, look at this. Donald J. Trump? Donald J. Trump is a number three on, on the list that, you, that's not that you're fair. releasing. I think that that's a problem when they ask that, too. Well, now, me... now, I would turn over anything. But, but no, you wouldn't. The whole point, the reason you're here right now, the reason we're talking about all this is you're saying you won't turn over things. That's the problem, Sam. Right? I, I'm saying that I'm not going to spend 80 hours going over emails with Steve Bannon and Roger Stone because my e Let because me ask Ari, you the Ari, Ari, Roger and me and Steve 
Yeah. We communicated like 50 times right. a Let me, day. And we talked about that. This is my final, my final yes, question. Sir. I appreciate you sharing with us your thinking. It is certainly newsworthy. This is the final question yes, for sir. you. Uh, and again, I say this, forget the law, forget the journalism, forget that we're on a TV studio. Okay. Is it possible, as, as someone listens to you and you talk so much about all of these people and you've been through something with them and you feel that you've been through something that's been unfair, is it possible that in the heat of this, you're having a very strong reaction based on, on the strong feelings you have and that over time, you might come around to a different view of this? Is it possible that this is coming in the heat of the moment? I think that, I think that in our discussion and what you said, I would have no problem going to the grand jury. But I once again don't want to have to spend 80 hours going over emails. You'd rather spend possibly a year in jail than yeah, 80 I'm hours going, to, going through I'm not emails. going to jail. You think I'm going to jail? Sam Nunberg, uh, Maya Wiley, Barbara McQuaid, thank you for uh, if being a part If Mueller wants to send me to jail, that is a joke. Sam, you've been on the show before. You came on on a day when uh, you've certainly made some news, and we appreciate your time. And for those watching, we appreciate you sharing your perspective. What we're going to do is fit in the first break of the show. It's a short break, and when we come back, I have Evelyn Farkas, Caddy Kay, uh, and some other analysts. Again, my thanks to all of the panelists. Thank you very the much. The beat will be right back.